welcome to my channel. In case you're new here, my name is Lorena and I love to share my recipes with you. And if you've been here before, then hello again. Today we're going to do a recipe that I've seen very few people make it, but it looks so great that I hope that mine is as great. But if you're seeing this, it means that it was. I'm going to make a apple lasagna. There is no dough involved in this. It's just layers and layers of apple and sugar. Um, and I saw um, different versions that sometimes they have walnuts in the middle or brown sugar or cinnamon but I want to keep it really simple just apples and sugar and then um, tomorrow I'm going to make this vanilla sauce custard that is going to go with it so I'm just really excited about this if you want to see the full recipe all you need to do is click on the link in the description box below and that will take you to the blog where you will find lots more recipes also, if you like apple desserts, give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done it already. I'm not going to make this apple lasagna, so if you want to see how it's done, then keep on watching this video. Now, for the caramel, the way that I like to make it is I'll make a really thin layer of sugar on the base of the pan. And so, as it, as it melts, I'm going to add more sugar on those parts of, sh of, of sugar that has melted. And so on until I've used the whole sugar for the recipe. You want to use medium-low heat, especially if you're not experienced in this, because we want a clear caramel. We don't want it to be really dark and rich, because then it's going to be a bit bitter. It's important that you don't use any utensil to move around the caramel, but rather only use the pan to spin it around. If you were to use any utensil, you risk uh, the caramel caramelizing and then you won't be able to return it to a liquid state. Once you have used all of the sugar in the recipe, then you want to just wait for it to melt completely and then it's done and ready to use. Once the caramel has melted, it goes into my mold. My mold was in a preheated oven at 100 degrees Celsius or 210 degrees Fahrenheit and this gives me a bit more time to move around the caramel to every corner of the mold. At the very end you can use a spatula just to even out any large lumps of caramel that you might have. Now the fun part. So now that my mold is covered in caramel, still hot, um, I'm going to cut my apples. And for that I'm going to use a mandolin because we need really thin slices just like pasta. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to peel them and just slice them up. If you want to do it by hand, you can, but just it will be really difficult for you to get the right uh, thickness. You want to slice the apples on one side until just before you get to the seeds, then you rotate the apple and continue on the other sides. Now we're going to start to assemble our millefeuille. After each layer of apples, you're going to sprinkle in our mix of sugar, cornstarch, and also a tiny bit of salt. As you can see, I like to make the apples on the sides go up the sides, so that then it's easier to unmold, but also it will look nicer. Every four or five layers of apples, you want to stop and press them down so that they are really nice and tight inside the mold. This is essential to getting the final texture. Once the mold is filled up, then it's going to go into a preheated oven at 180 degrees Celsius or 350 Fahrenheit for one hour. Place a baking tray underneath the mold because it tends to drip a bit in the oven. Once it comes out of the oven, you want it to be warm before unmolding it. So when I was ready, I used a knife to make sure that the sides are not stuck to the mold and then I just turned it around onto the plate where I was going to present it in. This is really important because you're not going to be able to move it onto another plate later. Don't worry if a few of the apple slices have stuck to the mold, you can always remove them and place them on top of your apple meal for you. Now I'm going to make a vanilla custard to go with it. And the first step that I'm going to do is whisk together the egg yolks with the cornstarch. 
Then in a separate pot I have my milk with the sugar and I'm going to add the vanilla paste into it. You could also use one vanilla bean, you want to open it in half lengthwise, remove the seeds from the center and also use the pot to flavor the milk. Alternatively, you can also use one teaspoon of vanilla extract or vanilla essence. We're going to heat the milk until we see steam coming out of it. Once I see that, I'm going to add just a tiny drizzle of it to the egg yolk mix and whisk it in really, really fast. Then I'm going to add the rest of the milk. This mix is going to go back onto the heat to cook until it thickens. It's really important that you're really paying attention to it so that it doesn't split and that you're mixing constantly and using medium to low heat. Once it has thickened, remove it from the heat immediately and change it to another container so that it stops the cooking process. I would be lying if I said that I haven't tried this already because I already ate a piece but I'll try it again for you guys This is totally my type of dessert the apple is so sweet and delicious and caramelly and with the vanilla uh, custard on top, it's just so perfect. Now you can also make this vegan if you go with vegetable milk for the custard and also uh, replace the egg with more corn flour or cornstarch. That was my apple milfe. I used to call it a lot an apple lasagna, but it makes no sense. It makes more much more sense to say that it's an apple milfe. I really hope you like this recipe. And if you did like it, don't forget to give this a huge thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel if you haven't done it already. It's free and only one click away. You can also follow me on all my other social media accounts. You can see them right here and also down below. If you make this recipe, don't forget to send me the photo, tag me on them, or use the hashtag CJ recipe so that I can see it. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you on the next one.